Hi, guys. Welcome to Halloween Thanks. Daily. Thank you so much for uh, hanging out and talking to us today. How are you doing? Thanks for having us. Thank you. I'm excited to talk about History of Evil. I watched it the other night, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a very unique kind of blending of, of some subgenres that I'm a fan of, because there's this kind of near-future um, dystopic story of this political activist on the run from the government, and then you kind of cross that into this uh, uh, kind of horror genre of the haunted house setting. And um, so, Bo, I guess I'll start with you as um, the writer and director. Um, can you tell us just a little bit about the genesis of this? I, I guess about the history of History of Evil. Yeah, sure. Um, initially, this started out as a contained family drama um, sort of set around my parents' experience uh, back in Iran. I was born in Tehran, and I came to the U.S. when I was one year old. But before I was born, uh, my parents were both very active in the Iranian Revolution, uh, speaking out against the regime. So I always wanted to do something with that because there's so much there. Um, so, yeah, I set out to write this uh this, you know, contained family drama, but I am a big genre nerd. So I was like, how can I bring in, you know, some genre elements to the script? And it started, it started off, you know, still set in Iran with this family living in this old village. And there's a monster that represents kind of the, uh, the brutal government, you know? A metaphor um, but then it just started taking iterations and de through development with xyz and two and two we started to bring it more to today's time and we thought what if it's set in the u.s near future um and yeah when i was writing it the most shocking thing for me was you know when i'm writing the the scenes for the militia and the checkpoint a lot of that was actually taken from the initial script that was happening in Iran in the 70s. So a lot of mirroring going on there, um, which was scary to me. And yeah, that's kind of the genesis of it. Very cool. And I, like I said, I do like that that blending of it. Um, and Jackie, you know, obviously your character, Allegra, is at the center of this story. <laughs> she's, she, she's like on the run. She's this activist, a revolutionary character, I guess. Um, and, and then again, set in, like Bo was saying, this very contained, um, drama and, um, with this, this big world happening outside. Um, I was curious though, um, you know, with a lot of real world stuff, you know, alluded to in this film, obviously in real world inspirations, like Bo was just talking about, did you find inspiration in any like real life? Um, activists or, or revolutionaries from history? And if, if so, which ones? Well, the the really great thing about this was that I, my mentor uh, is Carmen Perez, and she was uh, one of the lead, uh, the women who took the lead uh, for the Women's March. So she's a mentor for me, and she, uh, she leads the Justice League as well. So I've been just watching her and uh, balance, you know, activism and being a mother so i already had that in front of me for a, a while since i've been shooting orange is the new black and also being a part of a show like orange we do a lot of marches we're always you know using our voice for the injustice you know so i've oh i, I was already attached you know uh as soon as i read it and um and i was inspired by bo's mother as well like i got to meet her she's um a badass and uh we don't really get to see characters like this in film so uh it's kind of like a dream character to play someone like her and um and uh i was also raised with a lot of women mostly women so very strong women so um that for me was easy taking the lead but you know working with someone like paul who's very strong very strong character um uh, as Ron and, and as himself too, like um, trying to, you know, create this woman who was a bit more powerful and making him feel a little like less of a man, which I was not trying to do. That's maybe in his head, you know, and that was his internal, you know, what he's 
fighting with in his head. Um, I, I thought that was really beautiful and powerful, like her, her monologue speech and um, trying to uh, get that, you know, across and, and um, get her voice across. And uh, I, I hope I did it justice. I, I was very excited to play uh, Alegre and after I read the, the script and, and I'm happy that, that um, I got to work with Bo and, and, it, and we, we worked very well together, you know, to create his vision and, and what I saw too. And, uh, you know, I'm very serious about my work and this was like something that was a bit challenging, number one, because it was very quick that we had to shoot and I had to get in that mindset very fast. So, um, so it was, everything was challenging, uh, you know, but it, it helped create this urgency in the film and also, um, uh, in, in her character. And, uh, I don't know. I hope you, you I hope you enjoyed it. I, I, I loved every moment of set good, good and bad. Well, and, and you mentioned how, how challenging it was. I was going to ask that of, of both of you, um, you know, with Bo, this being, again, writer, director, and being your first feature uh, directorial film, and, and again, with having such a central role for you, Jackie, I was going to ask you both, what was the most challenging aspect of making this film for each of you? Jackie, you can go first. Um. Well, I just became a mother, so um, I only was three months after giving birth, so pumping and all that during the scene and, you know, uh, but it also brought a lot of emotions that I didn't know I had, you know, so just when you become a mom, I don't know, you expand, you, and also you fight for someone um, till death, you know, so I already, I I got that, I had that, and, and you can't really act that to you know unless i mean you can't act that of course there's mothers in movies that, that are great actresses who aren't mothers but i'm saying i got to live that so um and i use that you know being a new mom so uh it was a little hard you know uh leaving the baby so soon like all day but i they were lovely enough to let me bring my baby so i got to go home to them in new orleans so you know, and it was during COVID, which was scary because a lot of people started getting COVID on set. And lucky me, still no COVID. Uh, I've been, you know, oh. blessed. <laughs> yeah, I've been blessed. So um, I, uh, that was a little challenging. Just, you know, just, you know, leaving the babies and going into this kind of intense environment yeah. and trying to come home and be a mom again, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for me, I mean, so I come from commercials and music videos. Um, that's kind of how I started and was, you know, um, paying the bills. Um, but before going to Louisiana, where we shot the movie, I tried to mentally prepare myself that this is going to be the hardest thing I've ever done. And it emotionally and physically surpassed that. <laughs> like, there were things that I would have never expected. Um to go down, but also I think the challenges, uh, I say that now, but like at the time I was like, oh my God, like, what am I gonna do? You know, we don't have this one thing or we don't have enough time, the light's running out, we can't go into overtime. A lot of these challenges actually force me to be scrappy and be on my toes and come up with creative solutions. I mean, I was writing, rewriting parts of the script while we were shooting. Um, you know, I'd go home after we'd wrap and rewrite some of the stuff for the next scene because I anticipated we might not be able to pull it off how it is on page. So knowing all that, and then I got really good advice three days into shooting on the third day. Um, you know, coming from commercials, there's a lot of money and time. And I was kind of having that same mentality on set where I would take a lot of takes and... I would stop and think about like, okay, how do I want to maybe do this different, block the scene different? And my producer came up to me and said, <laughs> which is great advice, great advice. He was like, for your first film, you just need to finish it. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? Of course I'm going to finish. And he's like, no, literally, you're going to, a lot of people don't finish their first film. They don't finish uh -huh. production because they run out of money. They get to post and... 
So after he said that, I was like, I'm not on the commercial where there's a ton yeah. of money laying around and time. So I became a little less precious and I put all my energy into the big set pieces that really mattered. And not to say I didn't care about some of the other scenes, but I just had to manage like my expectations. And yeah, the COVID was hard. I got COVID. Um, I had to direct um, about a week, week's worth of scenes from the Airbnb with a monitor and a walkie talkie. And yeah, so there was a lot of challenges, but I do think the challenges looking back on it definitely helped force us to be on our toes and make better creative decisions. We hear that a lot, that sometimes, you know, the challenges do kind of force a, a more more creative solution sometimes. Yeah. Um, and as I'm watching this, you know, obviously we are, of course, Halloween daily, where every day is Halloween. Halloween's always on the brain. And as I'm watching a movie like this in the near future, in this society you've created, I'm, I'm thinking there's, there's probably not much tolerance for something uh, like the Halloween holiday in this world you've created. Um, I know you guys might have not thought about that until now, but what do you think? Halloween might look like in your uh, universe you've created, if, if it even exists there. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I never, that didn't cross my mind at all. Uh, <laughs> I would I, say Halloween every day. That is, it's scary. Yeah, I think like in a world like that, at that point, people, I don't want to compare it to the pandemic where no one was going outside, but Maybe it's a little bit like that where people are just too depressed and too afraid yeah. to leave their house. Um, and uh, yeah, I think Halloween might look a little different. It might be too real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like you said, the scare is a little too too real in, in that world. And, yeah, um, right. And, and if you'll indulge us before we let you go. Do you guys, in your real life, uh, look forward to the holiday and, and celebrate it like we do? Do you go big or just kind of kind of lay low? Where? What do you mean we do? Where are you right now? Well, we we're in North Carolina. We're out on the okay. uh, Outer Banks of North Carolina. Oh, cool. Nice. Oh well, I love Halloween. Absolutely, I'm an actress. I love to be someone else for a day. Some maybe a blonde or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Halloween is my favorite holiday. Um, yeah, it's awesome. I. Like, as a kid, I would always, you know, ask my mom if I can turn the house into a haunted house. So, <laughs> um, I would scare, like, other kids coming trick-or-treating. Uh, I love Halloween, the franchise, of course. Um, yeah. But, uh, no, I love Halloween. And I, I, I can't say that I dress up anymore. Um, that's probably because I'm <laughs> too boring. But... But like as a holiday, like I, I freaking love it. I love everything about it. I actually don't live too far from the original uh, Michael Myers home in Pasadena. Oh, wow. Nice. I mean, I drive by it all the time. And um, cool. every year you got Michael Myers walking around, you know, for the month of October. And I just love it. Oh, that's, that's so crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. That is, that is awesome. I love hearing that. I love, I love Halloween so much that, you know, like that movie Mean Girls when all the, you know, the little girls are 16 and they dress up super sexy. I was a freaking pirate, you know, at 16. <laughs> nice. Took a treaty. So that's like, that's how much I love Halloween. It's, yeah. it's bad. <laughs> I'll go right now. Well, thank goodness I have kids. I have an excuse. But if I could trick or treat, I would. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, and like you said, it's great having kids because then then you can go out and trick or treat. Yeah, you have more of an excuse. Um, yeah, but yeah, I love hearing that that you guys love it like like we do. So my my last question, we always try to ask everybody before we go, what is your favorite Halloween costume that you've worn and your favorite Halloween candy? Um, favorite Halloween candy is Sour Patch Kids. Um. Favorite costume? I was once the uh, baseball theories from the Warriors. Uh, we had a little crew uh, in college. We got the black eye and the whole baseball uniforms and everything nice. with the long hair. The, we got the wigs. Yeah. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah. Well, do you do you know the movie Splash? Yep. So I got to play. I I did the actually I like to be blonde. So I had the big blonde 
But I was a mermaid. That was my favorite. <laughs> Oh, awesome. That was a, yeah, I love that one. And uh, candy, I have to say I got to be old school. Those little, like, uh, the ones that look like uh, corn. Those corn. Oh, oh candy, candy corn. Ones? Yeah, yeah. That's, I love those. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. Good picks all the, all around. Very cool picks. And I love your <laughs> costume picks, too. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Some classics there. Well, I know you're really busy. Of course, I know our audience is, is going to be checking out History of Evil and looking forward to it, and I recommend it, and I enjoyed it. Thank and you. I can't thank you both enough for hanging out and talking to us today. And we always hate to say goodbye, but since it's always Halloween for us, instead, I'm just going to say Happy Halloween. Happy, happy Halloween. Halloween.